Welcome to another episode of Real People, Real Stories, where we provide you with compelling tales from everyday people just like you. I'm your host, John Wendell Adams, author of the novels Betrayal and Payback, along with the soon-to-be-released novel, Ruthless. You can always find me by going to john at johnwendelladams.com. So for the next 23 minutes, let's get to today's guest. I hear you. I see you. That will encourage them to get their stories out. Hey, well, yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you also. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you that um, it's a joy and a pleasure when we talked and I told you what uh, I wanted you to do and you raised your hand and said, hey, yeah, just let's figure it out. So it's uh, like you're the guy that nobody can say no to, <laughs> you know, it's like it's so it's, it's sort of like Antoine. Let's go. Um, let's go hide this hide this body for me, Antoine. Sure, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you got it. No, um, no, you're just such a uh, inspiration to me because you completed your third book. I yeah. have written a few papers in college, and that's pretty much as far as it goes. Uh, <laughs> I did a couple comedy shows here and there, but uh, know, oh, just a couple, yeah, just a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, but, All right, but, but mm -hmm. you wrote a book. You're yeah, well, written books, man. It's inspiring to see someone who is constantly um, increasing their lexicon, not only as an individual, uh, but just as an artist, as a, as a writer, as, as just a person. So it's it's really awesome. Well, but Antoine, I got to tell you, man, and I I wanted to really service this time together well. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we could have just hung out and, you know, talked about what I know and what you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right, right. But I wanted to invest some time really just digging into the Antoine McKay story, man. Okay. And, okay. Excuse me. I have to tell you that, uh, you know, there were some really compelling elements for me. Some things I really didn't know, some things I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the truth is you're an, an actor, a comedian, mm -hmm. a writer, a director. Right. I mean, it, it just a, a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, I just I wrote this down so that I didn't forget it. Right. OK. OK. Yeah. So you were a regular on Second City, both in Detroit and in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And then then more recently, you were uh, doing the Comedy Central uh, review. That was a few years back. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was one of my um, first really big things that clicked for yeah. me um yeah, yeah. You know, i had done stuff along the way I, I was on prison break prior to that and i, I um, know well um, that hit the hit tv show empire mm -hmm. uh in addition to that several movies man i yeah, mean yeah uh weatherman rogers park mm -hmm. uh, he sends rain uh but you know the question i would ask you is um why acting why the arts uh, you know, it was just something that was always uh, really uh, very much a part of the canvas of our family growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, my, my father, his birthday was just recently and I posted on Facebook and this is true because I always say this, like outside of Jesus, he's the greatest guy that I know. He's such a self-made man, first of all. Um, he went from being a janitor at University of Michigan Hospital to a janitor at Ford Motor Company. And when he retired, he was the superintendent of Dearborn Stamping Plant and then consulted for a few years even after that, after his sure. retirement. But his dream was always to be an actor and a singer. Really? And, yeah. And, you know, he did, you know, back then it was really hard for uh, a man of color to find a place where his art would be accepted and you know and then back then you know just the laws were different it's sure. like get a job learn a trade go to school get a family you know just and, and all of those things are noble and i believe in them sure we always went to stuff we always went to shows at the fox theater we would go see the rockettes or we would go see a play um uh, we always did those things. And then my brother became, started doing acting in high school and he's four years older than me. Right. Um, but he looks like he's eight years younger than me. Uh, <laughs> wow. But, um, yeah. But he, um, you know, went to high school and did a lot of theater. And I remember going to see him. He was Will Parker in Oklahoma in his senior play. 
Oh wow! And, yeah, man, and and he just came out on stage and he just exploded all over the place, and people were going nuts. And he came out for his curtain call, and everybody just instantly stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Holy <laughs> mackerel! Right, you know, and I was a football player at the time, and I'm like, <laughs> I want to do this. <laughs> You know, this is way more easy and less concussions. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what's interesting? Interesting to me, I said it really at the top, and that is you got to Second City in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you as a regular, and then you moved to Second City in Chicago. What was significant about that move? No one in the history of Detroit main stage. Hmm. Uh, had ever jumped from Detroit main stage to Chicago main stage. Wow. Uh, Chicago main stage is, you know, there's been amazing performers on all stages on in Toronto. Um, and, you know, Chicago Northwest was here uh, sure. for a long time. And then the ETC stage has, has had amazing people come off of it and go on to do amazing things. But um, main stage is it's kind of hallowed ground and sure. you get on main stage that's the, you know that you're you're on top of the mountain man. got it um and every night that you perform you have to be the best performer in the city and you, when you improvise after the show you have to be the best improviser in the show <laughs> and that is what is expected of you but you are rewarded for those things you know sure. um, when I got to Chicago, uh, after my second show, I got flown out to Saturday Night Live to audition, which was really fun. Um, wow. Yeah, but my, the people I auditioned with, man, are like the who's who of comedy right now. <laughs> wow. Was, which was Andy yeah. Stanberg, Bill Hader, uh, Kristen Wiig was in my audition group, uh, John Lutz. So yeah, it was really crazy. But um, yeah, being on main stage in Second City in Detroit and Chicago, it changed my career. Because yeah. after I left, I... I, two days after I left main stage, I was a series regular on a TV show on NBC. So, oh man, oh man, yeah. oh man. Well, yeah. you know what's you know what's interesting to me again as I dug through your bio, I mean, you had like eleven films, man, or eleven uh, projects in which you were involved, particularly between twenty fourteen and twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were just really significant well and i guess the question i want to ask you is why the significant uptick during that period uh it was review review was a part of that i had done review mm -hmm. earlier on uh review on comedy central got it you know i was working with andy daly who has a hilarious podcast sure. uh, and is on you know many different shows eastbound and down he was and then he had his own show called review and it was uh about a guy who reviewed life and right. Then I actually played his best friend on that show. Okay. And uh, I was in five episodes of the first season. And it was really amazing. I got to work with Fred Willard, um, Jen St. Clair. Yeah, uh, Willard, you know, funny guy. Yeah, man. Just like heavy hitters. And, right. And when you do something like that, that proves to people in the outside world, and everybody's always watching, believe it or not, that you are you can be trusted with the material and you can be trusted sure. with, you know, the $250,000 they may be spending in the day. Yeah, and, yeah uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and then I had done a commercial prior to that for American Airlines called mm. Man, and that, you know, that was a 15 day trip. And I went from Chicago to Argentina, to Texas, to China, wow. uh, to Rome and then home. And, <laughs> and it was just like, Oh my gosh, you know, we did all of this, Amazing travel. And we, it was a great commercial. It ran for a year, uh, for a couple of years and we won, we won awards for that commercial. Wow. Uh, but second city opened up those doors for me, you know, Got it. the training. Then I went right on to the show called sports action team after that. And that just kind of kept rolling and rolling and rolling. So, yeah. Well, I guess the more times that people have an opportunity to see you in different kind of situations, right then they were like, well, gosh, if he could do that, he could do this, mm -hmm. which kind of yeah. leads me, you know, we spent a fair amount of time, you and I talking about sort of the differences between comedy and drama. Right. And, and the fact is you've done both, right? Mm -hmm. and, yes, I have. And I've well, very because a lot of people probably don't know that, right, about the differences between comedy and drama and the real 
Why the distinction? Why is that important to you? Uh, I think drama gives you an opportunity to go into some dark places that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to go to, or we choose to annex off and shut off. Sure. Uh, whereas, uh, but it's a part of humanity. Whereas comedy, whether we like it or not, uh, whether we are introverted or extroverted, it is always a part of our lives simply right. because we're human. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. and our our failures are sometimes drama, but most of the times they're comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, being able to jump back and forth between them uh, constantly keeps you in a place of learning, and right. that place of learning is just learning about the human condition. Mm -hmm. And you are constantly seeking to master the art of being a human, whether flawed or successful. What I love about comedy and the satirical comedy is there's no heroes in satirical comedy. You know, yeah. everybody's a failure ultimately at some point. Uh, yeah. What I love about drama is that it's based in truth and pain mm -hmm. oftentimes. And, but that's humanity. And I've been very blessed to have a really wonderful classical training background uh, and a comedic training background, sure. uh, which uh, exemplified both of those. Being a hybrid, you start to see that humanity all at once is comedy and drama. And they both can live in the same place, but also bring on a different emotional effect for right. not only yourself, but the audience. So yeah. One of the things that, I mean, you just sort of blew up in my mind shortly after we met, was this whole notion of what you do with improv, right? Is those um, those two words, yes and, right? right. But in, in, in drama, you talked about it before, it's life and pain. And I just, you know, it, it was so significant to me. And I've watched a number of the films in which you've been in. There's one, uh, this thing of He Brings Rain. He Brings Rain, yeah. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you played a, um, a reverend, a priest, uh, mm -hmm you know, man of the cloth, I guess that's why I'd say. Right. And did it, I think, really well. And Thank you. Yeah, and, and watching that film, there's the reason for why it is that I even bring this up is because you, you make this comment today about life and pain in mm -hmm. drama. And there's something that I just, I, I really want to read because it was the turning point, at least for me, in that film. Right? Okay, cool. cool. So, you're, so you're talking to uh, this guy who's central to the film. Mm -hmm. uh, he's having, having a difficult time with his dad and, you know, doesn't want to see him, talk to him, et cetera, et cetera. And you have this perfect moment to speak to him. And mm -hmm. here's, what, here's what you said. We have to forgive because bitterness will destroy you. And it's about mercy, not judgment. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, when I heard you say that, it was, and I know, you know, you're reading your lines, but it was done so well that it touched this guy. And I think it was a turning point of the film that mm -hmm. he decided to become reconciled with his dad who later, you know, passed away. So I think that's right. the thing that you were saying before about the significance of life and pain in drama. Right, right. And, and, and those also exist in comedy because, you know, disaster plus time equals comedy in some cases, you know? Sure, um, sure. Um, but those words in that film, I believe to be very true. Sure. Because, uh, you know, I'm a man of faith and you know that. Um, yeah. Uh, as, are, as are you, we both are. And um, oftentimes we, we kind of miss the point on some things sometimes. Sure. That statement alone in itself is... It just represents and says so much to just life. And it's just important that we stay in tune with that. Yep. 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 You know? And that forgiveness, um, because, you know, people wrong us all the time. We yeah. wrong people. Right. Um, but if we don't forgive people, we create that bitterness. And that just shuts us off from the yes and of life, you know? Yep. How many times have you said no to something that you could say yes to simply because of an experience that you had? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, you and I, uh, one of the first times we were hanging out together mm -hmm. uh, when we did the, the book launch on the first book, I told this story about uh, Oprah Winfrey being betrayed, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody really did her a real disservice. 
And she said, you know what? I mean, I am never going to forgive that person. They wronged me and I'm just holding on to that. And then she was someplace, you know, at some soiree, a party, whatever. And she saw the person across the room and the person was just laughing, lots of frivolity, et cetera, et cetera. And she was like, they're not worried about whatever it is that they did to me. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's holding on to the bitterness. Absolutely. Right? The expression is that bitterness is like, you know, taking poison that you really want to have the other person take. But the truth is you end up dying from it. Amen, brother. Yeah, that yeah. is the truth, man. How, holding on to that bitterness, I mean, it is sure. scientifically proven that it creates physical ailments because yeah. you are holding on to all of that. Yeah, and if right. you relinquish that, and that goes for drama and it goes for, uh, for improv and for life, if you relinquish that, you're open to a myriad and an unlimited, unlimited amount of experiences. Right, right, you know, right. Positive experiences that sure. grow you as, or challenge you or just make you in general better. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. One of the questions I guess I, I really want to ask is yeah. you've now started writing. You've been writing for a while mm -hmm. and directing and you've been directing for a while. But you know what? You have made a decision to place yourself behind the camera right right uh, in terms of direction and writing things that will impact not only the work you do but the work others do talk about that for a minute it's been really fun it's been really because you act for so long and you see and you work with a lot of directors and you know i've been very blessed to work with amazing directors man i worked with gore verbinski who directed all the pirates of the caribbean movies and the list goes on <laughs> But seeing what they do challenged me to want to create other worlds that have that same reality, that sure. same truth sure. that exists. And there were some directors that I've worked with that were less than desirable. <laughs> no names will be mentioned. Uh, and, you know, and truth, and truth be told, man, I've had my failures as an actor often, yeah, sure. so many times right. over. But seeing the opportunity to create a world and create a reality is going to speak to people. That was really important to me. That's why I wanted to become an actor, right. to create a truth that may not speak to the masses, but may speak to a different subculture of the masses and grab them and, and show them like, I, I hear you, I see you. Right. And what will that do? That will encourage them to get their stories out. Yeah. Um, so it's a give and take all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And it's a matter of what you do with the information. And you right. know that, you know, yeah. you, yeah. you've written 10 books, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what? Um, I, I wrote a lot of um, nonfiction, right? Mm -hmm. Before I got into the fiction genre. And you know, what's interesting is, uh, I heard this guy on television. If I told you his name, you'd know him instantly. And he was being interviewed. He, he's an actor and he started writing. And the guy said, well, you know what? This book that I'm reading, he's in Hollywood, reminds me a lot of Hollywood characters. Is there any truth to uh, who those people might be? He said, well, you know, a person once told me that if you really want to tell the truth, write it as fiction. Because nobody can come back and say, you know, you said that about me. That wasn't true. I'm going to take you to court, right? Mm -hmm, right, so, right. So, you, so you just write it as fiction, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, there's a, there's a question that I really want to ask you. I mean, as you start to think about, you know, many of the things that you just said about, you know, why writing, why directing, where do you really go from here? I mean, we're now, you know, just went through a year of the pandemic. We're coming out of that thing. I mean, you, you've been busy kind of creating and recreating yourself. I mean, where do you go from here? And if, if there were one or two things that you wanted to communicate um, to the audience in this show, or just from the standpoint of what it is that you desire to do, what do you think those two or three things might be? To bring us up and then for us to truly reconnect as humans. Hmm. And as you know, during this pandemic was a presidential election. Uh, sure. And then, you know, many other races for Senate, uh, representatives, um, for Congress, um, local uh, elections, and us being isolated, we were sure. inundated with it. 
Um, and so people often time that either alone or with a significant other or with friends who were not COVID positive, uh, well, in some yep. ways they were, yep. but yep. Um, there was a substantial amount of that I could, you or I could never account of camps right. that were developed. Right. And, and those camps all have their rules mm -hmm. and those rules have separated us. Yes. As just humans. So now as an artist, it is my social responsibility. Right? And I feel that. Yes. Uh, to go, hey, this is us. Pick up a mirror, show it to us all, and then show it to myself. So I make sure I'm staying intact. Yep. And then showing us how to get past all of this hurt, this dissension, this racism, this ugliness that has existed and has completely separated us in a lot of ways. So that's really super important to me right now. Right, right. And I think we are standing on ceremony right now. And when I say that, I'm speaking to the artistic explosion that's going to happen in the next year and a half. Sure. Because sure. artists have had nothing to do but write and create for this time. Right. I know in this time, along with my wife and other friends uh, via Zoom or whatever, I've created 12 different projects. Oh, that's great. It's crazy. And now I'm back. I'm on a show called uh, Southside right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we started shooting in the last couple of weeks, and uh, that's going to be on HBO Max. It was on Comedy Central, but HBO bought it from Comedy Central. And wow, uh, I just actually I shot some stuff yesterday. That's exciting, man. Yeah, it is cool. But uh, coming in and reading the scripts, it speaks to where we are. And it's absolutely hilarious, but very uh, it's very poignant. It's very timely it, because sure. it's our job as an artist, as sure. artists, it's our job to create from the times that we live in right and so to have that it's um that's my responsibility and i feel that's the responsibility of all artists to create for change or challenge or just advancement i don't want to get uh, too deep in the woods here but i think in conjunction with what it is that you're just saying i've been reading lots of stuff uh most recently uh associated with projects that were done during 2020 mm -hmm. right and completed and big studios decided they were going to hold those back i mean you know there was nothing about the avengers you know there's a james bond film that never made it to right. the light of day because of it and others right because they were trying to keep you from COVID, man <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah and and theaters were just closing down you know, right? I mean, right. nobody's nobody's going to them. Mm -hmm. Well, what that gave rise to, and you <clears> probably <throat> know this better than I, but it gave rise to are indie films. Yeah. Films by persons of color. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the list of the Academy nominations, there are more people of color than ever before, as well as women than never before. And I right. think I think that speaks to one of the other positive consequences of the mm -hmm. pandemic. Agreed. And the other thing is, to the point that you're just making, there are a lot of artists, not unlike yourself, that sat through that period in 2020 creating, really yeah, yeah. looking for you know, their creative juices to flow. And I'm just, I'm excited about what it is that's going to transpire in this year, 2021 and beyond. You know, you talked about... Um, south side that you're doing right now anything else you think you want to share with us about you know things we should be on the lookout for yeah man um we well south sides uh again as i disclosed is on hbo max now you can actually see the first season on hbo max oh great yeah yeah so we're shooting season two uh i just finished a movie called death by envy that comes out in a month or so, which is really cool. And that okay. was an indie film that I shot over the pandemic. My wife and I, you know, we were, we went to homecoming together in high school and then we didn't see each other for 30 <laughs> years and then we saw each other and now we're married. We are doing something called the Wayne International film, Television and Film Festival. And that happens September 9th through 12th. 
2021 in Wayne, Michigan, and we're excited about that. Uh, we come from a place that offered many opportunities and opened many doors. You know, I got a scholarship to college uh, right out of high school, and that was because I went to Wayne Memorial High School. And oh. um, yeah, so now we're back and we have a production company called Shell Chuan Productions, and we're going to produce all of our films and television shows in Wayne, Michigan, because oh. Wayne, Michigan is a, you know, it's a blue collar town, a town, you know, you can I, you know start what? In your mouth, you might get beat up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, as, as Johnny Carson would say, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so it went through a tough time during the 2008 crash. And then with oh, the sure. pandemic, um, you know, at some points in the state of Michigan, in some cities and counties, there was 39% unemployment rate in 2008. Wow. Yeah, man, that, that's substantial, man. Wow. So a lot of people lost a lot of traction. And so it's important to us to go back and create uh, not only a stream of revenue <laughs> for Wayne and then the surrounding cities, but also bring those arts to Wayne and the surrounding cities that we had an opportunity to take part of. Yeah, if, sure. You and I are not having this conversation if I didn't have those opportunities. So Got it. uh, it's really important for us to go back and do that. Well, you know what, Antoine, um, as we kind of come to the end of the show, one of the things that I want to say is I'm going to invite you to come back, man, and talk about whatever it is that uh, ultimately transpired in Wayne and other places. Mm -hmm. Give us those particulars again for Wayne. So the Wayne International Television and Film Festival happens mm -hmm. from September 9th through September 12th in Wayne, Michigan. If you have a film you would like to submit, or if you want to find out more about the festival, go to wayneinternationalfilmfestival.com. And you can find out all kinds of information. You can make a donation. Uh, you could sponsor something because what's really cool is because I'm doing these shows right now, I've been like leaning on people on the sets like, hey, man, you want to come to the festival, brother? Uh, come to your home. But, you know, if you don't, I could let the world know what's going on on this set. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, I hear it. Um, I hear it. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking some friends that I, you know, we've been acting together for years and uh, sure. hey, come and do a workshop, come and do sure. a, come and just share the knowledge that you have. So be that, a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it pours back into the community and uh, you're helping build or rebuild or enhance a community. And right. everybody needs that. So, yeah. yeah. So, Antoine, one more time, uh, uh, I'll, I'll let you plug uh, that Wayne festival just one more time give us the particulars uh, yeah it's the wayne international film festival uh television and film festival and you can check it out and find out all the information about it at wayne international film festival.com as always man every time i get together with you it's a real hoot i've enjoyed it i look forward to you coming yeah, back we have to have breakfast again soon man yeah i like that that breakfast day was good man it was it was yeah we gotta yeah. got come on all right. Well, you know, we'll both free up some time and make it happen. You are all over. You're like, I'm, I'm going to be consulting the president next week. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to. Well, but well about three weeks from now. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Joe didn't call me, but um, <laughs> right. his, his, his VP tapped me on the show. So. <laughs> and somebody, somebody asked me, is that what you're going to do? I said, well, yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> Amen. That's Amen. so funny. That thank you. Truth. Hey, yeah. brother, thank you. So I really much. appreciate you. And again, All right. um, you've been such an important uh, mentor in my life. And just watching you do the things you do, inspire me, challenge me. And I'm blessed to know you, brother. So thank you. Yeah. Well, me to you. So just stay at it, Antoine. We'll be back doing this again soon. All right, man. Love to you, brother. Amen. Thank you. Blessings on you. Bye now. You can always find me by going to john at johnwindeladams.com. 